Good afternoon and welcome to the 2018 TRAD session. Many residency programs have markedly reduced the number of hot seat conferences that they have been uh, performing in recent years. And this is due in no small part to the loss of the oral boards. Um, I don't know if any of you are having PTSD in the audience right now looking at those photographs as we've changed to a computerized based format. So this has tended to increase the number of didactic teaching sessions, sometimes with multiple choice or audience response type questions that are performed in residences. We can make, however, a strong argument for why we should continue to do hot seat type conferences. For one means, this is part of the Socratic method of teaching and its value has been established in medical education for many thousands of years. It's a means of active learning and a multitude of studies have looked at active learning versus passive learning and shown its superiority across many, many different disciplines and many groups of learners. And really, being able to do a succinct discussion of a case is part of our job as a radiologist. We need to do it as residents to present to our attendings at the PACS workstations. We need to be able to do it at least mentally to be able to make a succinct uh, radiology report. And when we talk to our clinical colleagues, whether it's just uh, discussing a specific case at the PACS workstation or whether it's in a multidisciplinary tumor board, again, we need to be able to do a good case presentation. Now, there are some learners who really enjoy these sessions and they find them very invigorating and challenging, but unfortunately for others, they can be an extremely stressful experience. Now, does this stress actually help their learning? Well, there is some data on stress and learning and it seems like a little bit of stress does actually help your learning and your memorization, but too much stress does not and that actually impairs your learning. There's some interesting data where they looked at anesthesia residents, where they had one group in the hot seat performing simulations, they had another group who were just watching the simulations and they measured both groups cortisol and heart rates and they found that the group doing the simulations, not surprisingly, their cortisol and heart rates are much higher, so these were stress indicators, and yet, ironically, they didn't do any better on the final evaluations. It's also important to think about the rest of the audience. It can be extremely tedious, boring, and you know, cringe-making even for them to sit and watch one resident take a case for five or 10 minutes and have multiple issues with taking that case. It's really not supposed to be a, uh, or a uh, spectator sport. You want to really be able to involve the audience, if you can, in as positive way as possible. So how do we turn the hot seat into something that's more like this? Well, one of the first things that you need to start, the most important foundation, is provide an environment of safety where learners feel that they can speak up without embarrassment, without humiliation, without shame, without feeling it's going to affect their evaluations. The hot seat is not intended to be a fear-based teaching tool. So you need to set up your rules for your sessions. You probably need to do this several times a year because residents forget these things. You maybe even need to do it at the beginning of every session but you need to let them know about the expectations for their case taking. For example, you may need to set up a rule which says you're not to interrupt the person who's taking the case unless until it's opened up into the audience. It's very embarrassing for a third year when the, they're struggling and the first year chirps up with the answer. You may need to go over how you should approach a case. This is particularly important for the junior years, especially at the beginning of the year for the first years. So have you go through how you would describe a classic case. I highly recommend not asking for volunteers. Um, it tends to focus on a very few vocal residents who are very comfortable with taking cases. Uh, I would recommend that you go down the line so everybody expects to be called on. Um, it's remarkable, but some residents can manage to hide and never take a case until they're really forced to in one of their later years. You need to select your studies appropriately. You need to make sure that every case has a specific learning point. These should not just be a random collection of cases you have on your computer or things that you happen to think were really cool. You need to decide what each resident is gonna learn from taking that case. 
allow people enough time to take the case properly, but not too much time. In particular, you may need to guide them to be able to take a few seconds to think about the case before they open their mouth. This can be part of your setting up the rules. You don't want to drag it out. 30 seconds can feel like about three hours when you're sitting there in silence. But um, letting them have a little time to just start spurting out, you know, first thing that comes to their mind can be very valuable. If your teaching point is not what the sequence is, then, you know, don't torture them with this, move on. You need to give enough images so that they can be able to get the diagnosis, but not so many that it takes them too long to search. So really get the right number of images up there. I would highly recommend not putting up a case and saying this is a really tough case because it kind of sets them up for failure. If you really want to do something like that, then say, you know, this is a really tough case, so perhaps we'll go through this together, or perhaps I'm going to focus down on the abnormality. If they don't see the abnormality fairly early on, then direct them towards the abnormality, either verbally or zoom down on it. You may even want to consider having zoomed focused images when you start. If your point is not really can they find the finding, but it, can they actually interpret the finding? Consider using a staged approach to questioning that is relevant to their training level. This can be done a couple of different ways. You can have a series of cases which are more appropriate for a specific residency level or a specific student level for that matter. Um, but you do have to know in this case what your residence levels are and in larger residency programs. This can be a little challenging, especially early in the year. And you might want to even have them sit by all level, first years in the first row, second years in the second row, and so on. Again, you set this up at the beginning in the rules. You can do it an alternative method. You can split the case amongst different residency levels. So you can have one case, perhaps ask the first year what the sequence is, what the second year, what they think of the findings, and then the third year, what is the differential diagnosis. In this way, it's a much less stressful experience for the residents because they haven't got to come up with a whole thing. And it allows even the most junior first years to have some experience in being in the, quote, hot seat. You can use call on a friend. So you can give them a few minutes to see if they can manage to get this case by themselves, and if they can't get the case by themselves, they, you can say, would you like to call on a colleague to give you some guidance? Again, in your rule setting, you can decide whether this um, friend they call on should be a, a, a colleague from the same residency level or senior residency level. Consider having them work in pairs. This form of collaborative learning is very powerful. They tend to feed on each other. They come up with stuff they wouldn't individually. And it also gives them an element of safety. There's something about, you know, well, yeah, I got it wrong, but so he got it wrong as well, that makes them feel much more comfortable. Give them a few minutes to just, uh, well, probably not a few minutes, give them 30 seconds to just discuss the case between them before one of them has to present it. If they start going down the tubes, don't let them go down the tubes for too long. You can give them a few seconds, but then really try and redirect them. So redirect them to an area of the image, perhaps. Redirect them uh, to a specific group of diagnoses to think about, um, or ask some other type of specific question. On the other hand, if the resident is all over this case and start to dig a bit deeper, perhaps say to them, well, why is it not some other diagnoses? How would that differ? Uh, what about if this was a child rather than an adult? What sort of management would you do for this disease and get more out of the case? Felix Chu at the University of Washington has an interesting way. He has a preview session right at the beginning of his um, case-based conferences. So he goes rapidly through the cases he's going to show, uh, leaves each one up for 30 seconds or so. The residents have a little sheet they can write down their preliminary diagnoses on before he starts the case formally. You can also think about sending the cases out the day before and let them take a look at them. The learning experience in the end is really going to be the same, but you may get through a lot more cases a lot faster by doing that. Talking of which, rapid case review, where you go through a lot of cases during a session, but you're only asking limited information about each one, is a tool that the third years in particular really like 
in the pre-boards, uh, particularly before the uh, core boards, uh, so that they can get through a lot of cases rather than a very limited number of cases. But this is something that might not work so well with the junior years. You need to know how to deal with failure. Um, if the learner just doesn't get it, you need to be able to find a way that they're not humiliated, saying, well, you know, to be honest, you really should have got this because we discussed this in conference last week, is not going to be a very helpful way of helping them take cases in future. You can say things such as, well, this is a really difficult case, the findings are very subtle, etc. But in some way, try to turn it into an educational moment, even when they've got things wrong. And one way you can do this is by trying to identify why the diagnosis they came up was different from the correct diagnosis. It may be that there's a whole bunch of residents in the audience who also got this wrong. And by describing a sort of compare and contrast type exercise, why this is not that particular diagnosis makes it a much more powerful educational experience for the whole group. You can also explain how you would have approached or described this case. So give them a, give them a kind of gold standard explanation of the case presentation. Now, uh, finally, at risk of being uh, criticized for misappropriating a very important syllable, it's immeasurably reassuring to re learners if you admit, you know, you don't have to make it up, that you want to miss this diagnosis or many attendings have missed this diagnosis or many residents have missed this diagnosis because each of those residents thinks that they're the only person in the whole room, if not in the whole world, who got that diagnosis wrong. And I can't really fully explain why they find this is helpful, but many residents have told me it is. So, in summary, the hot seat teaching method continues to be a vital educational tool in radiology, and it should be incorporated into all specialties. But the, tech, the classical, uh, but the traditional techniques may need to be modified to be able to provide the ultimate and best educational experience for all residents.